blow that building up, this wall, we're just gonna blow some stuff up and hopefully that will look cool. If it's so good, maybe we'll just say that's it. That's the movie. One shot. What do you want to do for the other 140 days? Go to Bora Bora? Coachella. Coachella. That'd be cool. It's a marathon, so you don't run too hard, but inevitably you do. That's just the sort of process of making a film. It's like a creative act. It's like sculpture or something. Through force of physical will, you have to like kind of make the things happen. And that's really satisfying for me anyway, in the end. That's a thing I've always felt pretty comfortable with working in a green screen environment. For me to communicate to the actors where everything was, it worked out really well. And it actually saved a ton of time. The cheats are always that one set piece that you have that you can kind of anchor the reality in. And once you do that, you can pretty much understand spatially how it works. Zack Snyder is an absolute fraud. That's it. Usually I come in here with a much better cold open and a much better hook relaying my general thoughts of whatever movie, TV show, or general topic I'm going to be discussing for my channel. Yeah, not today, champ. Unlike Zack Snyder, I'm here to attempt not to waste a single second of your valuable time as I preach, persuade, urge, advocate, and frankly, try to save as many people as I can from turning into a celery stick after watching the slow motion diarrhea stain that is Netflix's Rebel Moon. If you couldn't tell by now, Rebel Moon sucks. And my god, good thing I didn't watch this movie in 2023 because it would have no doubt, I mean easily, been the greater's worst movie of the year. But the craziest part is, is that that's just me personally. I'm just a tiny fish in a big ocean. Imagine if this Toontown-ass movie had a theatrical release. Oh look, an idiot. Let's point and laugh. <laughs> Maybe Zack Snyder just knew because this man would have been finished. For the newcomers here, I mention all the time and I gotta reiterate now, this is a channel of integrity. I took the L on the chin with the live action One Piece. Granted, we have never actually gotten a good live action anime, but an L is an L. And Netflix's live action adaptation of One Piece ended up being one of the greatest productions and most fun watches in all of 2023. I mention that because in the same breath, a dub is a dub. And back a couple months ago, when the first trailer was released for this ambitious dog shit of a movie, I knew then, and I'll reiterate now, Rebel Moon, Zack Snyder's wet dream. And I couldn't have been more on the money. It's absolutely insane that the same studio with the same budget in the same year could release one of the most unoriginal, self-indulgent, incompetently written, narcissistic, bloated, boring, visually disgusting, and simply one of the most unaware and pointless train wrecks masquerading as a film that I truly believe we've gotten in the last decade of cinema. All glued together with one of the most incoherent narratives and boring characters ever to be put into a quote-unquote sci-fi epic or whatever the hell this is trying to be. Which is just obviously Star Wars. Wow. Imagine a director who hasn't made a decent film in well over half of my lifetime and whose fans refer to themselves as a cult just released one of the most expensive flops and failures of the year. Even Disney didn't want this crap, just solidifying what most already knew and what some are too ashamed to admit. There is nothing left in the tank with this guy. Zack Snyder might not be a successful director, but he is truly one of the most successful con men of the 21st century. And while that's not something to be proud of, at least that is something that his fans can hold on to. Whatever, let's just dig into this T-Rex sized piece of turd, shall we? <sighs> All right, let's be brief and precise. The movie follows our main protagonist, Korra a believable girl boss who actually looks the part in who we the audience pick up with on a desert planet. I mean, a farming planet in a galaxy run by the Empire and their personal planet-destroying Death Star. 
I mean the Motherland and the Dreadnought. Man, this is so dumb. With her new home now under the eye and at the mercy of the Motherland after a chance visit from Dario, warrior of Germany, stopping by to obtain some resources to feed his army, you soon learn that all does not meet the eyes when it comes to our dear Korra. You see, Korra was one of the best of the best in the Moon Empire, rising her way through the ranks by accomplishments and achievements I do not remember, and after a mission gone wrong, abandoning the Moon Empire for reasons I also do not remember. With Korra being presented the choice to hold her ground and create a new home for herself, or run away like I guess she always does, Korra embarks on a mission to recruit her band of misfits and warriors for her resistance to stand against the Moon Empire and protect her new home. Not gonna lie, that's probably the best you're gonna get, including the movie itself. I know I took longer on this script than Zack Snyder did. So let's just get to... The music is kinda good. <sighs> Where to start? I composed and set aside a couple notes of some of the most important shitty topics to cover when it comes to this elemental sized turd in order to keep myself from rambling on and turning this video into an unbridled rage. So let's just stick to the basics, shall we? The characters on one hand in a nearly two and a half hour snooze fest have less of a personality than a cat video. Maybe. They're some of the most bland and vanilla characters, if you can even call them that, put to screen. Constantly walking around with the same dumbass expressions and empty look in their eyes as if they were struck by the Men in Black memory eraser right before Zack Snyder said, action. Causing the entire cast of characters to look like a bunch of mouth breathers throughout the entirety of the movie, with some of the most boring and overused character tropes, not only for a huge multi-million big blockbuster production, but some of the most boring and overused character tropes that you and your mates used to come up with back in grade school during your comic book or D&D phase. Personalities? Shut up. You shut your fat mouth. What I try and do when we're making a movie is we build a gym, we try and train everybody, and it's part of a cathartic experience of sort of joining the cast. There's this camaraderie and common area where everyone can kind of interact. The worst part is, is that it's not like the cast themselves are anything to laugh at. There's not a glaring miscast that you can really focus on. And for the most of us, at one point or another, we have seen the majority of their work in highly regarded projects like The Haunting of Hill House, Sons of Anarchy, or Game of Thrones. It's a talented bunch with screen presence to handle a little bit more weight on their shoulders. Well, some of them at least. But the deeper and deeper you get into the movie, you start to quickly realize that, well, yes, none of them really do anything special. In reality, none of them do anything at all. And that's because the pacing in this film is horrid. The way that the movie is structured, and again, a nearly two and a half hour movie, you spend the majority of your time watching Korra recruit her party, her rebels, to the point that the movie starts to quickly become a video game and not a good one. Moving on from exposition cutscenes to action set piece cutscenes back to exposition cutscene and the Matrix just never stops. You know what you didn't hear in those cutscenes? Character development, character relations, character growth. There are instances where certain characters lay it all out on the line for their cause, all the way to their death, or say a particular instance that led to character betrayals. You can tell by the score of the movie in the third grade level dialogue that the movie is asking. No, the movie is telling you, telling you the audience to care about these moments, these character choices, but how can you? You don't know who these people are. They don't even know each other. They're just a bunch of sad and moldy potato sacks by the second act of the movie. And by the third, well, you're just completely checked out altogether. It's just donkey shit. The sloppy and half-assed world building doesn't help much either when it comes to the immersion of the new galaxy. Zack Snyder has never really been known as the world building type, and that's not to say that an idea as grandiose as this idea in the pitch meeting was an easy feat, but there are no defining features or characteristics to the new planets that really stand out. Heaven forbid you forget to pause the movie to go take a leak because you might just miss a whole new location altogether. 
Even when compared to A New Hope, the Death Star was iconic, and more importantly, something that the audience could latch onto as a source of recognition within the galaxy, a visual entity that the characters and audience could align their point of views in order to create that audience to character relationship. Everything is just done wrong here. It's relatively obvious that this is what Zack Snyder believes an epic space odyssey should be, and this is not it. It's dark, gritty, lifeless, emotionless, hampered and eventually drowned by its own self-indulgence and hubris, all of Zack Snyder's worst tendencies when it comes to his direction, unimaginative action sequences, character tropes fresh out of a Redditor's fanfiction, character relations that go nowhere, incoherent world building, Toontown level writing, out of context monologues, unnecessary slow motion, and obviously filmed in a box. Everything that makes Zack Snyder a fraud and a con man. This man is a menace and needs to be stopped at all costs. I cannot, and I will not exaggerate when I say this, I wouldn't wish this 114 minutes on my worst enemy, and I hope with this review, you won't waste your time either. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I really don't have anything more to say. I wish I could have added this movie to my worst of 2023 video. You lucky, lucky bastard. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.